All righty, everybody. Welcome to my Sunday weekly outlook. I hope you guys are all doing well. Absolutely crazy past couple of weeks. Uh, really crazy week ahead. Already had a crazy week or a crazy start to the week. Um, there's been so much going on usually um, with these Sunday webinars. I just kind of go into them, but I've actually written down a few talking points for today because of how much stuff there has been going on. Um, obviously, just to let the elephant out of the closet, um, the elephant in the room is the coronavirus, right? So uh, that is obviously still going. So a couple of things that I just want to note about that. Um, we are approaching 350,000 cases. Um, I'm sure by midnight tonight, uh, we'll be at 350,000 cases. Uh, the last time I checked, we were like just right under, we were at like 338,000. Um, if you are in the U.S., uh, I just want to throw an interesting statistic at you that there's about 30,000 cases in the U.S. Okay, we just broke 30,000 cases today in the U.S., 20,000 of those, okay, so two-thirds of all of the cases in the U.S. are in New York State alone, okay? 10K of those cases, so a third of all the cases in the U.S. are in New York City alone. Um, so it's pretty crazy. Um, I know there's some other, obviously, bigger cities that are affected also. Los Angeles is pretty, uh, you know, there's a lot of other big cities that are affected, but nothing quite like New York City. Um, I'm out in Arizona. Um, in Phoenix, Arizona, it's not really too crazy out here i mean i think it's pretty much like it is most around the u.s you know uh i think most non-essential businesses are closed and mostly just things like the grocery store and i guess that's pretty much it i mean restaurants are doing takeout and stuff like that um but uh yeah so that that is where we're at with things so pretty crazy things are are unraveling and the numbers are definitely growing exponentially um i'm not going to get too deep into you know um like the bias of the coronavirus you know i mean there's a lot of biases of where it came from why it's here you know what it's doing there's a lot of like theories and a lot of things going on um and i'm not disregarding any of those theories i definitely believe that this is something there's something much bigger going on behind the scenes i'm not really sure exactly but i do think it will all come to light eventually in time um another big thing that i want to talk about is so last week this time last week this exact time last week seven days ago from right now if you're watching this live we saw the federal reserve cut interest rates early right because they were supposed to cut interest rates last wednesday but they didn't, they cut them last Sunday. So two days early and they slashed them. They absolutely tanked interest rates. Um, before that we were, before um, last Sunday, we were uh, at 1% interest rates or between 1% and one and a quarter um, in the US from the Fed. And now we are at 0% interest rates. So pretty crazy to see that happen. Obviously the Federal Reserve did that to, um, for, because of the stock market, right? If you guys have, hopefully, I mean, I'm sure all of you guys have probably seen the stock market has, I'll just show, I mean, we could show, I could pull up just the New York Stock Exchange itself because that's over 2,000 stocks. I could pull up the S&P 500, but I know a lot of you Forex traders, you guys like the US 30, right? The Dow Jones. So we can see where the Dow is at. Um, it's dropped a lot. Uh, this is the weekly chart. Okay. So we've actually given back all of the gains since the uh, later half of 2016. So pretty crazy. The past five years, just ab the, the entire bull run the past five years absolutely wiped out in just the past couple of weeks. Um, I mean, you can already see right here. I mean, I, this is no, I, I wasn't going to go into all of this yet, but you can see I, I'm, my target is 15 K. I think actually, I mean, that, that, that's my first target. Okay. I'm, I'm kind of going piece by piece. Um, last week when we were around 21,000, so actually it was the week before last on March 12th, specifically when we were around 21,000, I said that we were going to go down to 18,000. Here we are. Um, if you guys follow me on Instagram too, not to, not to toot my own horn, but just to give you guys a little bit of, um, if you don't already know, if you want to have some help uh, and insight with things before the market opened. So this was 
many, many, many hours ago on my story. So way long, long before the market opened, I gave my prediction that the market would gap open and it would gap down somewhere between 18,250 and 18,750. And you can actually see that's exactly, it actually gapped below my lowest expectation. It gapped um, open at actually it gapped uh, at 1833, but it's dropping down a little bit. I mean, it depends on where, what feed you're getting it from. If you're looking at it on FX choice, it's already hit into the 18 ones. Um, but yeah, I am still expecting this to continue going lower 15,000, then 12,000, then 9,000. Um, it's possible that the, that the, uh, the Dow specifically could go down. I mean, the entire stock market as a whole could go down like, Eight seventy to ninety percent. So that means we could see the Dow potentially get down to the three thousand range um, if things continue on, to unfold. So I want to talk a little bit about that. I kind of want to talk about the the stimulus packages um, that are actually being worked on as we speak. Okay, that was right after the market opened. Or actually, I'm sorry, just before. Well, actually, as the market opened. Um, uh, some people met uh, from the White House and they're trying to put together, which it's going to be called like the Coronavirus Relief Act or something of that nature. And if you are not familiar with stimulus packages, this is one of the reasons why um, we pay taxes is so for when things like this happen, the governments um, are supposed to have uh, reserves or central banks are supposed to have reserves or governments are supposed to have reserves to be able to, um, you know, basically boost the economy in times like this. Um, last week, when the Fed cut interest rates to zero percent, they also announced putting five trillion, injecting five trillion dollars into the market. Um, what their this economic stimulus package is going to cost somewhere between one and a half trillion to two trillion. So, um, you know, let me let me just get down to the the end of the point, guys. Okay, let me let me just like get down to the raw on this. Okay, first off, here's the thing central banks are going to fail. Okay. This entire central banking system and economic system, as we know it is going to fail. Okay. It's not a matter of if it's a matter of when it's going to fail. Okay. This potentially this coronavirus could be the catalyst. Okay. And when I say central banking guys, I'm not talking just like, um, you know, from fiat current fiat currency, you know, taking off the gold standard from the eighties, I'm talking centuries. Okay. Central banking began in the late 1600s. Okay. So we're talking centuries of this economic, you know, this, this rise in this, this financial system, it's just not sustainable long-term. Um, you know, uh, we saw in 2007, 2008, you know, kind of a precursor to the, what, you know, we, we could see an even worse uh, recession, you know, they called that the, the great recession in 2008. We could see that just being, you know, light work, a cakewalk compared to uh, what this is going to, what we could see happening. So, uh, you know, definitely buckle your seatbelts, guys. I, if you are interested in the stock market, I would not be too optimistic in buying the dips. Okay. Um, I think a good way to put it is that it's going to get a lot worse before it gets any better. Um, but yeah, like I said, my target is 15 K. So I'm looking at selling any rallies. So one of the, this, this weekend specifically, and also just to give you guys a reason of why I, um, how I knew or how I had an idea that the stock market was going to drop lower. This is why, um, so this basically you just follow, you follow what, what's happening and, and, and the market is a translation to sentiment, right? Of what people and investors, investors confidence at the end of the day. So especially with, you know, the US 30, especially with stock markets, um, also with the foreign exchange, but we'll get into that in just a moment. Anyways, this weekend, um, basically Trump was in a stalemate. Um, you, basically the, the Democrats and the Republicans were in a stalemate, you know, because for, for a stimulus package, you know, just both sides want different things, right? They want to put, give money to people, but with different stimulations. And so, or not simulation, uh, stipulations. And obviously each side has disagreements to that. And they're, they still were in a stalemate. And it's kind of getting to the point where, you know, a, a lot of the workforce is laid off, okay? GDP right now in the US is tanking, okay? Unemployment rates are skyrocketing right now. All right, we look at the we look at uh, the news for this week, and what do we have? 
on Thursday, okay? We have unemployment claims coming out in the morning, okay? Big day Thursday morning. This could be really, really bad for the US dollar. I mean, this, is, this could be bad. At the same time though, you guys might be wondering, okay, let's kind of segue this into uh, Forex and let's look at the dollar index. Some of you guys might be wondering, okay, how the hell is the dollar index skyrocketing right now when all this is happening, right? The coronavirus is, is, is going crazy. The stock market is plummeting. How is the dollar rising, okay? Well, it's pretty simple. I'll put it this way, okay? Generally speaking, a weak stock market is a strong dollar, okay? And that's because outside investors, I'm not gonna get super into it. You can go and look a little bit deeper, but there's just demand for the dollar, okay? There's demand for the dollar, okay? It has the highest demand out of any other currency um, when things like this are happening, okay? Especially when the, the US government needs money, okay? Needs to borrow money, okay? It goes back to bond yields and whatnot. If you guys have seen the bond yields got inverted. So there's a, there's a strong demand for the dollar right now. And that's the only reason why the dollar has gone up. Um, that's also the reason why gold has gone down because the dollar has gone up. Um, but yeah, so the stimulus package is going to be interesting. They're talking about, uh, I, I think when they were first talking about it, giving uh, individuals tw a $1,200 check. I read a report earlier today that they upped that to, there's a proposal to a $3,000 check per individual, not just family anymore, because I think they were saying a couple would get $2,400 and then $500 for every extra uh, every extra um, kid. Now guys, this is not, some people could look at it as free money, okay? In the sense in what it is right now, it is, you know, the, a term that they use as helicopter money, okay? Because they're basically going to give, I mean, it, it boils down to two things in not just the United States, but other countries that are on a lockdown and, and people aren't working, right? Every single country right now that this is happening to, GDP is dropping, unemployment is going up. Right, so there, there's one of two things that has to happen. Either the government has to reopen business so that businesses can make money and, and, and the, the, the economy can work, or the government is gonna have to give away money. And right now we're seeing the latter happen, right? The latter is being what's proposed and what is going to happen um, for how long it's gonna happen. I mean, I, I was reading some things today that it's most likely we probably wouldn't see, uh, like, I, I think there's stipulations. I think if you make over $75,000 a year, um, based on, on your 2018 tax returns, I'm not even sure if you're going to get any money from the government, but, um, those checks probably wouldn't even go out for another 10 to 12 weeks, which is pretty crazy to think, you know, that's almost three months um, and the average American or the average person, not even just the average American, right? The average person in Europe, average person, you know, globally in a, in a developed country, most of the population is working paycheck to paycheck with less than $500 in their saving account, savings account, right? So uh, we've already seen some things though, you know, I mean, uh, Trump has done a couple things. He's put into effect where, um, foreclosures and evictions are on pause until May, I believe. Um, there's probably going to be a push for them to completely just suspend all um, mortgage payments until further notice, which is in turn, you know, if you pay rent somewhere, that's because you pay rent to the person that owns the place that pays a mortgage on it, or maybe they have it paid off and they, you know, and then they, and they just collect the rent on it from, but either way, um, rent would be suspended as, um, you know, as a byproduct of, of mortgages being suspended. But, you know, I, I guess what I'm trying to say, guys, you know, I, I could spend hours and hours talking about all this, right? So I'm going to kind of just move forward with my, uh, with today's outlook and in, 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 in the, in, uh, the pairs that I want to cover. But I do just kind of want to leave you guys with this, that, and, and I kind of hate to sound uh, repetitive, because I'm sure you guys have probably heard this a lot recently, but this is the truth, guys. We don't know wh what's going to happen, okay? Um, you know, I, people can have an ideas of what's going to happen. I have ideas of what's going to happen. But at the end of the day, really, none of us knows how bad it's going to get. Um, it would be really nice. And it would be really great to be optimistic and say, hey, you know, we've seen a couple things like this happen in the past. Even in, you know, even in my lifetime, there's been a few things that have happened, right? 
a couple epidemic scares, you know, not, not quite pandemics, but a few epidemics here and there and some things that have shaken up, uh, you know, the global economies before, but this is definitely to a much higher degree. I was actually looking at this, this fear index. It, it's so crazy what, you know, how smart people are. Like, I, I don't even know. I, I don't, like, I, I think I'm like smart enough to trade, but like smart enough to like build these algorithms and stuff. Like there, there's literally people that have created a fear index and they put things like 9-11 and other terrorist attacks and other, other times like the 2008 great recession, all different things that have happened um, in the world on this, this index. And um, I wish I could pull it up. I wish I had saved it and I, I could pull it up easily for you guys right now. Maybe you guys can find it online if you look for it, but it showed that this being like, astronomically many hundreds of times percentage higher uh you know in, in, in weight of, of of how how high it was like the line of fear was it had gone up crazy and i'm not trying to instill any fear in you guys right i'm not trying to i'm really not trying to be here and scare all you guys to death but i'm also trying to be a realist at the end of the day that we don't know what's going to go on um you know i mean it's it's crazy okay so we'll we'll leave it at that there's all sorts of conspiracy theories with celebrities and and vaccines and all sorts of stuff but you know but at the end of the day we can take what is actually happening we, we see the federal reserve right now um you know basically bailing out the airlines if you guys haven't heard of what's going on there's literally it, it's how this is how fucked up the the world is guys that these airline companies because they're so big okay boeing all these all these giant airline companies they think just because they're so big that they're so important they literally are threatening the federal reserve and the government and saying that if you do not bail us out we're gonna lay people off we're just gonna stop doing business like how crazy is that it's like it's just in my opinion i don't know isn't that kind of like a messed up world when you have to like when you're doing like i don't know if you guys saw my instagram story that's why i had that oprah meme with you get a bailout, you get a bailout, everybody gets a bailout, right? It's because it's, it's crazy. It's like, it's every, everything is getting, it's, it's just, a, it's a, it's like a worldwide bailout at this point, but it's not going to be sustainable. That's the thing is it might, you know, like, like I said, we've seen things that happened in the past 2008, right? Right. We recovered pretty well from it, right? We didn't go into any sort of great depression or really anything really near that um, back in, in, back at that time. Now it seems like it, it wouldn't be too extreme if, if that happened. But anyways, I'm going to kind of, cap it there with the coronavirus um, news. Let me kind of segue into some more stuff and let me, let me go into what I want to talk about. So US 30 guys, this is one of the four setups that I would like uh, you guys to um, look at is consider selling rallies on um, the US 30 down to 15 K um, gold. Okay. Gold. Here we go. I have something written right here. So let's just kind of look at what I wrote. So I'm saying 1550 on a break of 1509, and that's my bias, okay? So I'm actually gonna be bullish on gold this week. Um, however, if we break 1478, then we're gonna go down to 1450, okay? So for me personally, we're kind of in a, a crossroads for gold, okay? It's either going to break this weekly pivot point, this resistance in this area. Let me get my marker out in case some of you guys can't see it. We're either, we're either going to break the resistance in this area and then very quickly move up to 1550, or we're going to break the support in this area and very quickly move down to 1450. It's really simple. Um, I am more biased towards this happening. Okay. I do think that the, the dollar is going to start to find some weakness and have a bit of a retracement. Um, that also could change though. You know, if, if this stimulus package really is, is seen and in, in as a good, um, you know, get some good PR with it, then we may see the dollar continue to rise. But ultimately, um, long term, the dollar will fall, all currencies will fall. Um, and gold spot metals are going to fly through the roof. It's probably near impossible to get your hands on spot metal right now, or I mean, a uh, metal like actual, like pure gold, uh, like if you want to buy like 24 karat gold. Um, you can buy like little gold bars like one actually it's, it's actually surprising i don't know if you guys have ever gone to like a jewelry store anywhere and seen what an what a ounce i guess you can call it a bar it's not even a bar there's just be boy on at that point um of gold is but it's really it's really tiny right gold is pretty heavy so it's really small like i, I don't even know how much a 
like uh you know if in the movies how much a uh, like those bar bars of gold weigh i mean those are going to be probably hundreds of thousands um if not millions of dollars like of, of what the value if you had an actual like brick of gold like in the movies so you know most people obviously don't have that kind of cash liquid or willing to put that much money into a brick of gold um so you know you can buy like i've seen it in la if you go to the jewelry district in downtown la you can find people that sell um just little bars of gold and it's like one ounce each or you can buy them a couple ounces each. But um, I guess the whole point I'm trying to say is it's not like you can just look right here and say, Oh, an ounce of gold is 1,495 and then walk down the street to your gold shop and, and go and buy a, buy one ounce of gold for $1,495. Gold is extremely marked up. I mean, even before the coronavirus hype, you aren't going to be able to find it really at the spot price. Um, you know, there's always going to be a margin. Um, and that creates a room for arbitrage. You know, some people make a living off of, of, of arbitrage of different things. I mean, that's basically Amazon, right? Drop shipping and all that stuff at the end of the day is just re a form of arbitrage. I mean, everything at the end of the day, all sorts of sales is a form of arbitrage, but I won't get into that anyways. But with gold, you know, it, it might have a couple hundred dollar markup price. So if I were you, you know, I've, I've had a lot of people messaging me say, hey, is it a good time to go buy? Like, you know, should I go and and buy a bunch of gold. Yes, you should buy gold, but not in the sense of, of physical bullion. You should go in and look at scaling into into uh, you know spot leverage positions um, as gold moves. So basically, I mean, it could, this could be it for gold. This could be it. You know, this 1450 range, this literally could be the bottom before we see 2000. And let me remind you guys, not to toot my own horn, okay? But let's not forget if you and anybody can fact check me on this there's over 20 there's two dozen people in here right now anybody that cares to fact check me or anybody that remembers at the beginning of this year end of last year beginning of this year okay when gold was all the way around this area okay we were around the 1500 area i said this year in 2020 gold will hit two thousand dollars okay we aren't even three full months we're almost three full months into the year in between the beginning of the year at $1,500, we went from $1,500 and we hit $1,700 on March 9th, okay? So in, in three months, we went $200. We only have to go another $300 from the all-time highs to reach where I, where I thought gold would be by the end of, at least in 2020. Does that seem too crazy to think anymore? No. I know some people thought like, how is it going to go to 2000? We haven't seen 2000 ever. I mean, the all-time highs of gold from I think 2009 is, let's go back and look in 2000 and is it 2009 right up here uh no 2011 i'm sorry 2011 all-time high is 1900 gold has never seen two thousand dollars an ounce in history right so um but you know history is is going to be made and um you know I, I wrote down a quote that i that i've seen a few times and it's really um resonated with me these past couple of weeks and, and it's this is not even like a quote or anything it's just a just a a statement is that guys we are seeing moves that normally take weeks or months that are happening in hours and days okay like guys some some of you guys i know you guys haven't been trading some of you guys have been trading for many years some of you guys have only been trading for a couple of months so this might seem normal you might not you might not realize how not normal this is okay this is the daily chart of gold and to see gold go from seventeen hundred dollars to fourteen hundred and fifteen dollars let's even round up up to fifteen hundred dollars in four days is ludicrous is insane two hundred dollars in in an ounce of gold in four days these are historical times guys i'm telling you like don't don't take these times for granted. Don't think that these moves are always going to be here because they aren't. Okay. There will be a time when the markets slow down and things go back to normal in these hundred dollar moves on gold literally take months to happen. Um, and, and that, so I say with a word of caution that observe this leverage and, and, and trade it and understand that it's a double-edged sword, okay? It can be very powerful and you can compound your account and you can do very, you, you can have some, you can experience some very massive gains, okay? If you guys have seen my MyFX book, if you have not seen my MyFX book, the link is in the description of this. The link is also in the Telegram. So the link to my free Telegram is also in the description to this video. 
Um, and you can follow my MyFX book on there. You can see that this year and the end of quarter four have been extremely good for me. Um, this month, I'm up somewhere around 10%. Um, I'm already in a trade right now on Euro Yen, currently holding that, waiting um, for that to move. But yeah, it's, it's just crazy moves, guys. Okay, crazy, crazy moves. So I'm bullish on gold. Okay, I'm bullish on gold. I think it's going to move up to 15, 1550 this week. Um, so yeah. 1550 on a break of 1509. That's my bias. All right. Um, let's look at Euro yen. So Euro yen, I am actually, I have this marked off in green right here because this is an active trade. I am currently in this trade actively. Um, I am short. Uh, I have my stop loss just above this, this area. So it's like the, just, just above 11860. It's above the daily pivot point and the weekly pivot point. My take profit is 117. That is a floating take profit for right now. So that's, that's and what I mean is that's tentative for me. Um, that definitely could change. And I have no problem if we really start to see the momentum moving into um, the, the first London and New York session of this week. Uh, there's a good chance I may just move it into a trailing stop loss with maybe like a 20 or um, 15 pip trailing stop loss and uh, target like one six, some fresh lows, 116, 115, something like that. But this is going to be a good move this week, in my opinion, because um, I'm expecting some safe haven strength. So with the strength of gold, I would also, I'm also going to ex expect um, the yen to weaken. So that's kind of that confluence or that uh, correlation bias, but also to look at this as just more of a a technical perspective and take it for face face value of what it is for itself. We definitely have some pretty clean redistribution going on right here. Um, nice bear flag going on. And uh, in my opinion, I see, I see a good short down to the lows. Okay. I don't know um, what else to say about that other than that's what I see. Um, oil, oil should continue going lower. Um, if you guys are one of my students last week, our main focus was oil. Um, I, I hope, I really hope you guys, um, any of you guys out there in the public, you guys saw this short on oil last week. We opened up the week, like right somewhere, right around here. Really, really nice. Um, really nice price action, really nice bear flag. And it, in my opinion, last week, the oil short was a free trade because, you know, I always say this guys and I always I always tell this when I when I talk to my students that get good at understanding fundamental analysis, okay? Get good at understanding the macro and the micro economics, okay? The geopolitics of the world because that's I mean technical technical analysis is one thing, but technical analysis always will leave not always, but most of the time will always leave some sort of room to some degree of uncertainty, right? There's, you know, you might, and, and what I mean is you might look at a trade on one time frame, and let's say on like the one hour and the four hour, it looks like a really good short, right? But then let's say on like the 15 minute in the daily, it looks like, looks, looks like a good buy, all right? And there's always going to be two sides to the market. And that's what is that is liquidity, right? That is volume in the market. We have, uh, we have bears and we have bulls in the market. We have buyers and we have sellers, but um, just make sure that you put some focus on fundamentals because the example with oil is I knew oil was going to go down and I know oil is going to continue going down because it has to go down because uh, specifically last week, Saudi Arabia flooded the market, the market with a bunch of barrels, millions of barrels at $25 a barrel. Okay. So what is that going to do? Right. That that's going to bring down the price inherently of oil. So it was pretty easy short last week. And then we had the price action, the technical analysis to, um, to add confluence, right. A nice, nice bear flag. Uh, it, it's not going to be crazy guys. We can see oil. Oil is a good short too. I think I might even have something written on oil. Um, did I write anything on here? Yeah, right here. Okay. So I believe that this week we're going to see at least sub $20. Okay. So we'll see under $20 this week. Um, 
Now, how low are we going to go? 18, 16, 15, maybe 12, $13 a barrel could be pretty crazy. Um, you know, that's, I, I would say, you know, it's hard to find a silver lining through all of this right now, but this is a one silver lining that, uh, you know, we are definitely taking, get, taking it easy or getting a break at the pump right now. Um, I know gas prices in Arizona, um, well, I, I use premium fuel, but normal unleaded fuel, I think like 87 is going to be at uh, almost under $2 a barrel uh, or under $2 a gallon. I know I saw a report, there was like one gas station somewhere in like Indiana, somewhere in the Midwest that it, for the first time uh, in, in a long time, in over a decade or something, it's under $1 a gallon. So pretty crazy. Someone in, in the chat says, what a time to be alive. So yeah, what a time to be alive when oil is, is cheap. I mean, what a time to be alive when everything's crazy. So um, oil can go lower and will go lower. Oh, and I also wanted to kind of put this into perspective too. Look at, this was my argument too last week is from a technical perspective. What is it on the weekly time frame? Yeah. Okay. Here it is. Okay. So if you look at the last time that oil started to really drop back here in 2014, okay, it kind of like wedged out for a while and then dropped a little bit. Okay, and who, who would have thought at that time it was going to have the decline that it did, right? Go all the way from over $100 a barrel, uh, over a 50% drop down to below $50 a barrel. So pretty big drop. But I just want you guys to look at this price action here because this right here kind of reminds me a little bit of this. And then this looks a little bit like this correction right here. And so after that, we saw a really big decline. So we could still see a really big decline on this, okay? And also, um, I know this is kind of random, just to something that popped into my mind because I'm thinking about like the charts and the scales just to put things into perspective. Okay, this looks like a big drop on here. I wish I could pull up. Hmm. I don't think I can go back far enough. Let me look really quickly. Yeah, I can. Okay. So just to put things into perspective, guys, I know this looks like a big drop, but let me just kind of put things into perspective of where we really are. Okay. We've seen a pretty significant drop, but overall, if we go from the beginnings, okay, we go from when the Dow started at zero, and we go all the way to where we are now, you know, basically we go from the highs at 30K and we're at 20K right now, it's about a 33%. It's about a third decrease, right? We, we still haven't even hit a 50% retracement, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind. You know, I, one thing that I talked with my students on, and I'll, I'll just leave you guys with this. I think this is really insightful because um, I know I kind of had this stigma in the beginning of trading that don't think guys that the markets are too low to go lower and don't think that the markets are ever too high to go higher. Okay. Don't ever get into a sell just because the markets are so high and you're like, wow, these markets have to drop eventually. And don't get into a buy just because the markets have dropped and you're like, the markets have to go up. Okay. There's a saying in trading and just in life that says, you don't, don't try to catch a falling knife, right? Okay. Right now, the stock market is a falling knife. Okay. I would really advise against buying the dips. Okay. If I were you, if you have any money in this, and this is just my opinion, right? This is not financial advice. This is just, I'm just going to say it like this. If I had a lot of money invested in the stock market, you know, through 401ks or not even 401ks, just maybe I put some of my own money into you know, the stock market, I know a lot of Robin hood has been really big with a lot of people putting money into Robin hood and just like trading and stuff, obviously, because we've been in a bull market for so long. And that's the problem is people are so conditioned into this bull market that people think it's just going to go up. People are so used to just buying the dip, but I'm telling you, we're in unprecedented times, but what I would do, I would sell all of my stock. And I actually said this last week, I've been saying this to my, my close friends for the past two weeks. I've been telling all my close friends, sell 
all of your stocks. Get rid of every penny of it. Don't, don't just downsize your portfolio every single penny. Liquidate the entire portfolio and stay cash, okay, cash heavy, a cash position. Wait for the market to drop seriously, okay, like sub 10,000 and then look at getting back into positions, okay? But this waiting one week, waiting a couple of days, buying the dip, I'm telling you guys, it's worked for, for the past couple of years. It's not going to continue working. I mean, and this is a great example of it. People are getting shafted over these past couple of weeks and day, as, as days go on. Everybody's trying to buy the dip, but I'm telling you guys, sell the rally, okay? That's my opinion, okay? Again, all, everything here is always just my opinion, okay? No financial advice here. So that's that, guys. If you guys want to follow me more, um, I'm most active recently or or what I'm going to be most active on is Instagram. Um, If you guys follow me on Instagram, it's just my first and my last name. No spaces, no nothing, nothing fancy. Um, Beware too. I do want to put a a public service announcement too. There is um, a profile. I mean, there's a couple profiles, but there's one profile that is going around and messaging people and it's, it's my name but with an underscore right afterwards. Okay. And remember my Instagram name has no characters in it whatsoever. It's just letters, D A V I D S H I N K E L just no spaces, no nothing. And theirs has an underscore and I've tried reporting it. If you guys see them, if you can report it, please do so. Um, I've tried reporting it for some reason. Instagram still isn't taking it down. Um, I'm working, I'm talking to some people at Instagram so they can take it down for me, but uh, it's not an overnight process, especially with the delay of everything in life right now with this affecting everything globally. Um, So just be aware of that. But other than that, um, I'm just planning on just trying to post as much free value and content as I can for you guys, posting more targets for you guys, posting more trade setups, posting just more value, things that I would probably want myself to be, to see or be aware of. It's just sometimes I get so overwhelmed with everything. I just forget to post. I know it's such a simple thing to do, but I'll go, sometimes I'll like wake up, have intentions to post some things for the day. And then it'll be, you know, 6 PM and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I got so wrapped up in in life and whatnot that day. I forgot to post anything. So I apologize if I go dark on social media once in a while, but um, you know, the one thing that is always live and always updated is my track record, right? It is my MyFX book. So Um, You can definitely go and see that and see that I have been active and doing quite a bit of trading. Like I said, Q4 was amazing for me and my clients. And also we've started off 2020 to a great, um, an an amazing start. January was amazing. Um, February wasn't bad. March has been amazing so far too. This could potentially be a triple digit return on investment year for myself and my clients um, and my students that follow my trades. So um, yeah, it's going to be a, going to be a good one guys so i'm excited where things are going um but yeah stay stay safe out there guys things are literally changing um day by day and i'll leave in last thing i'll say and i actually meant to say this in the very beginning is that everything i meant to everything i said today is supposed to be short term okay remember there's volatility going like crazy um you know literally things are changing biases are changing from one day to the next or they can change from one day to the next depending on what's published and what is said out there on on um, you know what what between what trump says be not just trump too i mean the, the the coronavirus is global but you know me living in the us and it affecting like the stock markets and things like that it's obviously a little bit closer to home than other countries so i'm following that a lot more um but i'm also following developments in in other countries too but you know basically like uh you know, like the, the, the world works because of the U S dollar. And I don't say that out of arrogance or anything like that. I'm saying out, out of that literally, right. Like trade and stuff is, is, is made possible because of the U S dollar, right. You know, a lot of, a lot of things like let's, for example, barrels of oil, ounces of gold, right there, they require U S dollars to be, uh, to be bought. So there's a lot of demand for U S dollar. So without the U S dollar, you know, I mean, that's, that's what the most pressure goes on. So I'll leave it at that, but have a great trading week guys. Um, if you are a student of mine, I'll see you guys in Discord. I'll see you guys tomorrow for, well, obviously, later this evening, but I'll see you guys in Discord tomorrow for the daily webinar. Everybody else, I'll see you guys here next Sunday. I'll definitely have Zoom figured out too um, because our, I, I stream, I use Zoom to stream through YouTube. And for some reason, YouTube and Zoom are not talking to each other. So that's the reason why I'm doing it on Zoom today and then uploading it on YouTube right now. Um, 
yeah, I'll see you guys on, uh, on this tomorrow. So see you guys in, in Telegram. Have a safe trading week out there. And I hope you guys um, kill it and stay safe during these times. So see you guys next week.